Here to help me rip the Band-Aid off, the true state of the GOP is former Trump official and Texas State Representative Brian Harrison, along with New Jersey Congressman Jeff Van Drew. Gentlemen, welcome to you both. Representative Harrison, I want to begin with you. You're sounding the alarm on the conduct of your fellow Republicans in the Texas State House. This after the GOP approved a resolution calling on House Speaker Dade Phelan to resign. Many Republicans around the country, and even in Texas, they are shocked to this day to learn that Democrats actually elect the GOP Speaker of the Texas House and that Democrats actually run the Texas House with their hand-picked Speaker at the helm. Texas is the only state that does this. Now, I've, I've gotten this explanation, Representative Harrison, down to about a minute and a half. So as directly as you can, tell America how the Democrats choose the Speaker for the GOP majority in Texas in the House. It's absolutely shocking. And look, as somebody who spent, uh, you know, three years before getting elected battling uh, the entrenched liberal special interest in the D.C. swamp, I was shocked when I got elected to the Texas House of Representatives to find out that the most swampy behavior I ever could have imagined, and that is Republican office holders telling their voters, vote for me and I will go and fight for conservative values for you in Austin. When they get to Austin, they sell those voters out and hand the Democrats the power that the voters intended to be in the hands of conservative Republicans. Can you imagine if um, Speaker McCarthy campaigned for Speaker by getting Democrat congressmen to vote for him, and then once he got elected, saying to Nancy Pelosi, hey, I'm gonna make you a committee chairman. Hey, AOC, I'm gonna let you run whatever committee you want, and force the conservatives in the House to prostrate themselves before liberal extremist socialist Democrats. It happens every day in the Texas House of Representatives. And like you said, it's uh, the Speaker of the House, who is a nominally a Republican, just uh, killed every single serious border control legislation that happens in Texas. So it's not just a problem in Texas anymore where Democrats are giving control. It doesn't just affect us. It affects all 50 states. It affects the country. I filed a bold border security bill drawn on my time in the Trump administration, the Texas Title 42 Act. Uh, the Governor Abbott supported yep. it. It was killed in the Texas House. Yep. Yep, you, uh, Venezuelan flag flying in Texas. You can thank Speaker Dade Phelan and his lieutenants. Uh, Congressman Jeff Andrew, uh, th this, this, is, this is happening in, in the conservative state of Texas. But through elected officials like Mitt Romney, John Cornyn, Liz Cheney, Adam Kinsinger, and others, the GOP seems to be afflicted with pro-Democrat Republicans that sabotage the conservative agenda on the national level, too. This infighting has been laid bare by this budget fight that you're right in the middle of. The Democrats were united in their massive and dangerous overspending, spurring inflation and other harm to our country. Now, you'd expect the Republicans would be unified in stopping such a destructive agenda, but with no unifying principles, the GOP can't even agree to oppose Democrats. Congressman, doesn't your caucus need to set some standards? Look, we absolutely, not only does Congress, the Republican Party has to be unified, it has to be strong, it has to believe in American exceptionalism and Americanism. We're in the fight of our life here. We're fighting for this republic. I don't know if people realize how serious it is, but what we're doing to our kids' education when parents can't even be involved, what we're doing to our borders, I mean, no other country in the world would be insane enough to do what we're doing. Um, it's just unbelievable. What we're doing to our police and defunding and demeaning them, what we're doing to our military, where literally they put the Democrats in the Defense Authorization Act. We stripped it out, but it's got to stay out that they were going to have drag queen ambassadors to attract a new and better type individual into the military. We need the best, strongest military, most focused military in the world. I want to be clear. I believe America is the best nation ever on the face of the earth. We have to stand up for, we have to fight for, and it's important that Republicans remain unified. Otherwise, people are going to wonder why are they voting for Republicans if it's just mm -hmm. Democrat light. We have to be different. Yep, and many, many Americans out there, Congressmen, would be shocked to learn that certain middle, milk toast, middle of the road Republicans blackmailed. Kevin McCarthy saying they would join Democrats if he sided with conservatives. Again, the Republicans need some unifying principles. I, I wanted to get you both to respond to this next question. Isn't the measure of how worthy a Republican is the degree to which they actually stop the Democrats from harming our people? Rhetoric is, is no longer good enough, is it? Representative Harrison, you first. 
Yeah, it's absolutely not good enough. Look, it, it's easy to go home and tell your constituents you're a small government conservative. It's hard when you get into a position of power to do the right thing. When every temptation, I've been in the, in the D.C. swamp fighting it, now I'm in the Austin swamp fighting it. Every temptation once you get into power is to cave, is to go, go along, to get along, to do what the left wants. That's how the lobbyists take you out to nice dinners every night. You get glowing press coverage. Listen, if you're a conservative or if you're an elected official and you say you're a conservative, but you're not being attacked by the left wing Democrats or the mainstream media, you might want to think uh, twice about calling yourself a real conservative. Look, Chris, it is literally true that the next generation is on the line. And let me tell you who understands that the Democrats. And it's past time that Republicans stop compromising and start fighting for the next generation because I'm concerned that my four young children are not going to inherit a Texas and America where individual liberty reigns, where freedoms are protected, and where the government uh, thwarts the plans of would-be tyrants by behaving in a manner consistent with the limitations of power put on it by both the state and federal constitution. And if Republicans don't wake up, the entire nation is going to go the way of California, and that's not good enough for me. I'm not going to sit silently and let that happen, especially not in the great state of yeah. Texas. Texas should be leading the nation in the well, defense of liberty and freedom, and we're not doing enough of that right now. Congressman, you said it. In, in the fight of our lives, isn't it time the Republican Party rediscovered its roots and said, at least can we please oppose the Democrat Party? What say you, sir? Oh, well, let's understand something. It shouldn't even be called a Democratic Party. This is not your father's or your grandmother's uh, Democratic Party. This is a new socialist party that wants to change the entire social structure and fabric of the United States of America. This is no joke. And if we don't stand up and prevent that, then there's something wrong with us. If you don't stand for something, you stand for nothing. This is the time. This is the place. This is our country, and we have to fight for it. America has been great to us, and we have to stand up and fight for it. So I think the Republican Party is changing. A lot of those folks that you mentioned that really didn't seem much different than a Democrat, it was Democrat light or, you know, maybe slightly more conservative, they're leaving. They're leaving the Republican Party, and I think we're replacing them with new, solid people that care about the future of this country. We don't need all this woke stuff. We do need our children to be brought up this way, the right way. We do need, you know, I'm going to tell you one story real fast. On the judicial committee, which I sit on, uh, we had to have a half-hour debate at the very beginning when we set the rules that we would have a Pledge of Allegiance. Literally, Democrats were saying we didn't need to do the Pledge of Allegiance before we started the Judiciary Committee. This is bad stuff. This is not the America we know. It's not the America we love. I pray to God it's not the America of the future. State Representative Brian Harrison and Congressman Jeff Van Drew. Gentlemen, appreciate the discussion. It's one we have to continue to have.